online math classes and video games. So the purpose of this video uh, is to frame an online math class uh, in the framework of a video game. So uh, this is all based on a TED Talk. I enjoy listening to TED Talks. And uh, there's a TED Talk um, where uh, this lady takes uh, the idea uh, ideas from video games and applies them to real life challenges. So we're going to do the same thing with uh, an online math course, such as my online uh, Math 143 quantitative literacy course. Uh, so with video games, some characteristics you find in video games, uh, you have enemies, you have barriers, you have the way in which you play the game, you have power-ups, and most importantly, you have points. And our goal here is for all of my students to score the maximum number of points. So let's talk about starting, let's start, start with the enemies that you will face in an online math course. Uh, and there can be many different enemies. Uh, you might have your own, uh, but as an experienced math teacher, online math teacher, there are three major enemies that I watch be the uh, major pitfalls for students having success in the course. So let's talk about these three major enemies. So the first one, I have Bowser here. Bowser is the top bad guy from uh, Mario. Uh, and the Bowser of online math classes is procrastination. Procrastination is the most common reason students do not have success in my online math classes. It's what most commonly keeps them from the finish line. Uh, the next villain, I have uh, Dr. Robotnik. He's the bad guy from uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. And uh, the Dr. Robotnik, uh, for many of my students, uh, is uh, computer skills, uh, being able to uh, navigate Blackboard, being able to navigate platforms like Odigia, MyOpenMath, uh, and then using those resources to their advantage. Uh, then the third enemy that I find with my online math students, and I have the ghost here. This is actually pinky, but it printed in black and white. Uh, the ghost from uh, Pac-Man, and the ghost from Pac-Man is uh, math skills. Both uh, the skills that uh, we hope you've, you've picked up before entering this course, uh, as well as um, your confidence and uh, doing things like setting up proportion, proportions, finding the expected value. Uh, so you have procrastination, computer skills, and math skills. And some of you will identify more with one villain than you will with another. Some of you might have the computer skills, the Dr. Robotnik skills, really down. But you, you struggle with procrastination. You just have this strong urge not to really look at your work until the night before it's due. Some of you don't face Bowser at all. Procrastination is not your issue. But you haven't had positive experiences in math classes in the past. You don't have a whole lot of confidence when it comes to doing your work. So you, you mainly face the Pac-Man ghost. So it's good to know which enemy uh, is, is your main foe. Are you more of a Bowser or are you more of a Pac-Man ghost? And in facing your enemies, you will face barriers. So I have here a brick wall. It's a common barrier. There are barriers you're going to have to overcome. Uh, and these take a lot of different forms. Um, for some of my students, their major barrier is that they work. I have students that work you know, 12-hour night shifts, um, and they, they have a, a hard time sitting down at the computer, finding that time during the week to work through everything they need to work through to succeed in the math class. Uh, to some of my students, it might be family. 
Uh, you know, they have they have small children at home. They, they demand a lot of attention. They're trying to um, do their math work late at night when their children are asleep. Children are asleep, or uh, you know, in the afternoon uh, when they're taking a nap while they're also you know, trying to clean. Um, so maybe it's family, maybe it's work, um, whatever it is. It's it's healthy to identify barriers that are going to keep you from having success in this course. I have, I have students that uh, travel a lot for business. Um, I have students that um, are, are, are soldiers. Um, and so they have um, a lot of other responsibilities with that. Uh, I have students that are in remote places. Sometimes they have um, very spotty internet access. So that's a barrier they would have to face. Uh, so let's talk about how to play. Uh, and, and discussing uh, how to play an online math class, I like to think of a dinner party. Um, and if you are going to host a really successful dinner party, uh, one of the things you want to do is first set the table. Uh, and for an online math class, setting the table is taking the time to do the readings, look through the examples, read through the examples, try the examples, uh, watch uh, videos that um, I've you know, pulled out to, uh, to help you work through the materials. Sometimes those are actually lecture videos I put together myself. Uh, so set the table, take the time, work through it. I have so many students that have trouble getting to the finish line, having success in this course because they don't take the time to set the table. They want to dive right into the main course. They don't, they don't look at the examples. They don't look at the videos. They just dive right into the lab, right into the assessments. And that, that ends up causing problems for them. They, they do things like they don't, um, they don't figure out the terminology. So I encourage you to take the time to set the table. Watch the videos. Read the examples. Try the try it now problems. I encourage you to take notes. Have a notebook just like you would in a seated class. Take notes. I like taking notes by hand. That process of actually writing it out with my own hand, that's really helpful for me. So I encourage you, work through materials. That, I, I see that as taking the place of the lesson for a seated class. You know, come to school and that you want to sit down, pull up, for in my quantitative literacy class, it's Odigia. Uh, Watch the videos, take notes as you're watching the videos, read through the content, look at the examples, read through the examples, make your own notes, um, and uh, try the try it now questions, and make your own notes there as well. Uh, set the table, and then once you have the table set, it's time to bring out the meal. And bringing out the meal is where you, you strut your stuff. And uh, in an online math class, you're going to strut your stuff by... Uh, doing the assessments and doing the lab assignments, and I want to see uh, I want to see good work. Students that turn in good work always do well in my online math classes. This always happens. So take the time to set the table, and then take the time to do good work, bring it to completion. So that's how you play, uh, and and in my my math classes typically you have um, assessments that are on my open math. And then you have lab assignments that are in Odigia. So strut your stuff, do good work, make sure you're, you're setting aside this time to do good work, both in My Open Math and in Odigia with the lab assignments. Uh, we have power ups, things that are going to help you uh, get, help, help you accomplish those goals. Uh, and one of the big power ups for this class is inviting others to play with you. Uh, one of the things that can really help uh, identify those barriers, maybe that barrier is your work schedule, uh, your family, your travel schedule. Invite family and friends that can help you find the time to commit to this course so you can work through the material, turn in good work, get good grades, and get to the finish line. So invite friends and family to help you out, to, to tackle those barriers. Uh, you can contact me. You can contact your instructor. I'm always just an email away. I'll be happy to try to help. 
Um, we have here on campus, we have really good tutoring services, typically you know, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. So if you can make it to campus, uh, we have a, a walk-in math lab. You can come in anytime during those hours and get one-on-one uh, -on -one help. You can also schedule an appointment with a tutor who can work on you, work with you on a regular basis um, so you can really succeed in this course. If you're having trouble with computers, you can contact me. You can also contact tech support here on campus. So take advantage of the resources at hand. Call out to friends and family uh, for help, particularly for making sure you're taking the time to sit down, work through the material, to sit down, work through the assessments, work through the labs, and turn in good work. Uh, and then lastly, we have a point system, a point and award system. Uh, so this is my suggested point system for my online quantitative literacy class. For, you have labs and you have assessments. For every problem you complete in my open math, give yourself one point. When you get the green check mark, give yourself one point. Then for every day, you turn in a lab assignment complete and early give yourself 10 points. So if you turn in a lab assignment one day early and you complete a 30 question uh, My Open Math assessment, that would be 30 points from My Open Math, 10 points from Odigia, you just had a 40 point week. And that's great. 40 point week would be great. Uh, with My Open Math, if you're giving yourself points for every question you complete, uh, now you can really be excited when you have a long assessment. You know, you want to, you, your favorite weeks in this class can be the weeks when you're doing 40 question uh, My Open Math assessments, or you know, maybe, maybe the teacher will assign a 50 question one. You could get 50 points this week just from My Open Math. That would be awesome. So uh, give yourself a point system. Maybe you don't like my point system. Maybe you want to make adjustments. Maybe you need to make adjustments to fit your lifestyle. But I like doing a point per problem in my open math, 10 points for every day you turn in a lab assignment early. Uh, and then with these point systems, come up with some kind of system to treat yourself. And I don't know what works for you. Uh, maybe it's every time you score 50 points, you treat yourself to a, a soda. Maybe it's uh, every time you score 100 points, you work out something with your husband, your spouse, or your mom, or a family member. Every time you score 100 points, they will uh, babysit the children for you for an hour and let you sit back and watch Netflix on the computer. You can binge watch Netflix on the computer for an hour and get a break from your kids. Maybe that's something that really responds to you. Maybe it's eating out at a special restaurant or uh, stopping by the Dollar General store and getting a frozen pizza that you wouldn't normally get. Uh, find things that you really resonate with um, to treat yourself and have point goals. So every time you score 50 points or 100 points, you're going to treat yourself to something. Uh, and that's I find, find that to be a really good reward system to get you to the finish line. Getting a good grade in this course, having a good GPA, uh, you're completing your associate's degree, you're transferring. I want you to get you to the finish line for whatever your goals are. Um, and I think you know, a nice play, place to start is uh, framing it like a video game, identifying your enemies, whether, whether it be a Bowser or whether it be a Pac-Man ghost, identifying the barriers that you have in battling your enemies, uh, you know, playing the game, setting the table, taking notes, working through the material, bringing the meal, taking the time to make sure you're 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 turning in uh, good lab assignments. You know, I want to I want you to submit lab assignments that are like filet mignons, not undercooked ramen noodles. You know, when you only submit two out of sixteen questions in a lab assignment, that is that is not a steak. That's not a good juicy hamburger. That's more like undercooked ramen noodles. So turning good work, turning good stuff. So bring the meal, uh, have power-ups, have uh, people that you know that are in your corner helping you out, 
uh, and have a point system. Reward yourself as you go. Celebrate what you're doing. And, uh, and, and as always, I'm here to help. I'm just going to email away.